I've written and rewritten this in my head too many times to count by now, and my head and my heart still struggle to find the right words to convey how broken I feel. Never in my life have I felt such a spectrum of emotions in such a short amount of time. Excitement turned to anger, shock and denial turned to grief and sadness. I struggle with how much to share. Not as much out of vulnerability, but because writing down and sharing these words mean the past week and a half weren't a horrible nightmare, but a sad reality I will carry for the rest of my life. If you don't want to take the time to read the emotional roller coaster below, I don't blame you. This story doesn't have a happy ending, but at this point, my healing depends on the sad recognition of this journey and experience. On Wednesday, December 28th, David and I went to have the 20 week ultrasound of our second child. Anxious and excited to learn the gender of our baby, with messages coming in from all our family members of guesses boy or girl. When the tech began the ultrasound, I immediately recognized something wasn't right. I'm not an expert, but between PT school and my previous pregnancy, I usually have a good idea of what we're looking at before the tech explains it. I didn't see the top of baby's head. I kept waiting for the tech to move the probe in a way where we could see what we should be seeing. I could tell she was searching for it too. Within a few minutes, she reluctantly confirmed what I hoped I hadn't seen. Our baby had a crania, a condition where the skull doesn't fully form, typically resulting in anencephaly. I knew anencephaly babies don't survive. I knew what they looked like at birth. Images from PT school of innocent babies without the tops of their heads only able to survive a few minutes to hours at most if he were lucky. Images burned in my memory for almost nine years like handprints on fresh concrete. The sobs began immediately as I knew the prognosis of our baby was grim, hoping maybe there had been research and intervention between now and when I learned of anencephaly in school that may change our outcome. My ob soon entered the room to confirm the outcome was the same. Our baby boy was not viable after birth. On Thursday we had a follow-up with a specialist. Another detailed ultrasound to confirm the unfortunate diagnosis from the day prior. The doctor brought us to her office to explain the diagnosis, prognosis and discuss our options. Option 1, continue to carry our baby boy to 37 weeks then most likely have a C-section. That was assuming he made it that far in utero or I didn't develop significant complications that put my life in enough danger to warrant an emergency delivery. Op option 2, terminate the pregnancy. No part of me wanted to be pregnant anymore. Every flutter and kick he gave felt like a little gut punch reminder that I would never get to take him home. The back pain, fatigue, difficulty sleeping all weren't worth it anymore. I knew emotionally I couldn't go back to work and repeatedly explained to patients and co-workers that my baby wasn't going to live. I wanted to forget I had already invested 21 weeks into this baby's life and have a chance to start over. My denial quickly transformed to rage when the doctor informed us this was not even an option in the state of Kentucky. Recent changes in the law forbade me from ending the life of a fetus with a heartbeat, even though his heart may not take a single beat after birth. My physical being was in no immediate danger so it made no difference that I could develop sudden complications and be forced to endure an emergent procedure to save my life even though he wouldn't survive anyway. So where would we be able to go and get appropriate medical care? So where would we be able to go and get appropriate medical care? The closest place I know of is Chicago, she said through tear-filled eyes. My body melted to the chair. Traveling six hours away from home to endure the most traumatic and tragic event of my life felt like the ultimate insult to injury. I quickly texted my sister who works as a CRNA in Decab, Illinois about an hour outside of Chicago. Did any of the ops at a hospital do DNS? If I could at least be close to her, maybe this situation would be tolerable. We soon learned, they didn't have the equipment to do a D&D. &D, but they could schedule me to be induced. Being induced meant I'd have the option to hold him. To name him. To meet my baby even though I would never actually get to know him. For days I battled with making a decision. Initially, my hardened heart wanted it all to be over as soon as possible. But gradually I began to contemplate deeper. Maybe this is an option not every woman gets. Being induced with David and my sister by my side, surrounded by doctors and nurses who would treat me like family seemed like the best choice. On Tuesday morning, 
January 3rd we made the lonely drive amongst the giant windmills to Illinois to begin induction at 7.30 p.m. that night. Labor was tolerable with pain medication. Different this time than with Annie because I wouldn't need to be fully dilated since baby boy was so small. The doctor and nurse warned me he may come quickly, and they were right. At around 11 a.m. with David on one side, my sister on the other and just the nurse in the room, our baby boy was born. He still had a heartbeat for a few minutes. I held him in my arms as I sobbed and examined every tiny inch of his innocent body. Long, skinny fingers and big, narrow feet just like his sister. Nose and lips just like his dad. He was perfect. Solomon Matthew English was born on January 4, 2023. His name means peace and gift of God. May he rest in eternal peace with his creator. No amount of food or flowers or words can fill the hole in my heart. I'm hopeful with time I'll be able to experience full joy again. My sweet Annie and my loving husband remind me every day there is still happiness and love to be felt in this world. I am speechless to explain how grateful I am for my sister. Without her, the emotional trauma would have been so much worse. She called her Rob and set up appointments. She gathered fax numbers of hospitals and phone numbers of funeral homes. She made me the world's best postpartum care package, complete with slippers, snacks, pads, phone chargers and more. She made us coffee and food and let us sleep in her own bed to recover. She held me as I cried uncontrollably, and she was there to hold my hand as I gave birth to my son. She is my hero, and my angel on earth. I love you more than I can ever express, Brittany. In light of how awful this past week and a half have been, I know I am one of the lucky few who was able to be surrounded and supported by family and friends through this whole experience. There are too many women in my situation who don't have the means or access to receive the health care they need for the option they choose. Mostly because ignorant politicians make decisions that prevent health care professionals from helping and serving their patients. The pain behind the eyes of both of my doctors in Kentucky was palpable when they knew they could not provide the care I needed because the law forbade them. It is not black and white. Abortion is health care. We should care about the lives of our women and mothers just as much as we care about the lives of their babies. Forcing a woman to travel hundreds of miles from the comfort of her home and family to endure the most traumatic experience of her life is cruel and inhumane. My greatest hope is that change will take place to ensure my daughter never has to go through the unnecessary trauma associated with this or any health care needs. Thank you to everyone who has sent food, flowers, prayers, messages, and hugs. Although only time will help me to heal, your love and support are recognized and appreciated. Thank you to my parents who stayed home and took care of our Annie girl. Knowing she was safe and loved allowed us the space necessary to feel and grieve. Finally, thank you to my husband who continues to support me, hold me, and carry me through every step of this journey. You are the best father, partner, and friend. I love you more than words, David.